Hiya guys, we're at the allotment, loads of weeding. We've just spent a good bit of time watering everything, but now we need to weed. Um, we're probably going to try and get some of the potatoes mounded up, which in a way will help us with the weeds as well, because we, as we're digging the earth to mound them up, I suppose we'll get some of the weeds out too. What else? I'm going to check my garlics. Some of them are looking quite uh, bulbous. Might be ready for picking. What else? Shed walls. The potato grown entirely in grass cuttings. I need to sort that out. So, let's get doing. We need grass cuttings. Lots of them. Here is the potato grown entirely in grass cuttings that I'm doing for shed walls. Right, let's have a... Let's have a look, see if we can see this bud. So there's still quite a bit of green in the grass. Is there anything growing through yet? Can we see anything? There's a spot. Oh, there it is. Right, there's the spot. Has it started rooting yet? Uh, oh yes, 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 there are some roots. Tiny little white ones. Hang on. I don't know if you can make it out for the grass that's covering it. There are the odd few little white roots. Right, Custy. Let's pop that back. Let's cover it over again. And what I'm going to do is we've just cut some of the grass path. I'm going to add some more grass cuttings to it. I'll pretty much just keep the bucket as full as I can really. I think that's how we'll do it. We'll be able to get enough grass cuttings. Right, and then give that a water. Keep it nice and moist. So, so far, it's it's doing all right. It's doing okay. It's got signs of growth. There's roots coming out of it. The grass has held together quite well, actually. I was expecting to come back after a week and uh, find that there was the bucket was empty with just one solitary seed potato in where all the grass had just disintegrated but it hasn't it seems to be holding together quite well so progress progress speaking of progress we've still got an enormous amount of jobs to do on this plot so we better get cracking well i say lots of jobs i am very well known for being distracted by butterflies i'm just earthing up these two rows of potatoes i know it's quite difficult for you to see perhaps because of all the weeds that have been growing but by earthing them up, it's digging up the weeds as well. And, you know, any that are coming to the top, we're, we're pulling out and getting rid of. So I've just got a little bit more to do. Earthing up, there's a couple of different things. Um, but at this time of year, covering up the, the foliage of the potatoes, to protect them from frost it's not really an issue anymore at this time of year so what's happening now is by continuing to mound up earth against the stem any potatoes that are going out from that stem in the soil you're going to protect them from the light because when the light gets them they go green and we don't eat green potatoes there's a it causes a, a chemical inside that's toxic to eat so it just stops the light turning your potatoes green Two rows of spuds, done. This full bed of garlic was overwintered garlic. I planted it out, I think it was about September last year. And just looking at it now, a lot of the foliage is starting to go yellow. Um, and where the bulbs are exposed, they're starting to skin up with the, the white skin. And some of them have got a fairly decent size on them. So I'm thinking, yeah, I will. I think we're gonna pull these now. We'll, we'll pull them all, um, take them home, clean them, let them dry out, wipe the mud off, the dried mud, uh, if there's any left on. And then we'll, I've got like a, a metal square mesh cage rack thing. It was from um, an old mini greenhouse. And what we do is we stand that up and we hang the garlics through, bulb side up, and they, they dry out a treat 
on that, to be honest with you. Yeah, so I think we're going to harvest this garlic now. Woohoo! This garlic, Casablanca, is a hard neck variety and we planted it in September last year to be overwintered as the hard neck varieties tend to need a bit more cold than some of the soft neck or spring planted varieties do. In order for the bulb to split into cloves, it needs temperatures of less than 10 degrees C or 50 Fahrenheit for around about a month. That's why we have this out over the winter. But now it's been in the ground for eight to nine months. Now time to harvest it. Garlic will do best in quite well draining, very rich soil in an open, sunny position. We planted each clove roughly six to eight inches apart. When you buy seed garlic to be planted out over the winter, it will say plant in autumn. You can get away with planting garlic right up until Christmas, to be honest with you. We have in the past, we've done late sowings right up until Christmas when I'm off work for the Christmas holidays and it's absolutely fine, it, it's no problem at all. Perhaps it might just mean that you have to wait an extra month, six weeks before you harvest it. And here is some of our garlic harvest. Like I say, we'll, we'll, oh wow, you've got more. Oh yes, Ruby. Right, so there's quite a decent amount there. We'll take that home, get it cleaned up, get it dried out and stored and used. Hell yes. Right, I need to hold this bed off now and then we can get something else planted in there. These are our four elephant garlics, which my eldest daughter and I planted September or late August, was it, last year? Now we're starting to, three of them, have got a flower spike um, some of the leaves have started to bend over and die back they're going yellow as well that says to me that they're ready to be harvested so I'm really looking forward to this it'll be the first time that we've we've grown it to harvest we've never grown it before so this will be our first harvest of elephant garlic right then let's see how this works Now apparently it has a huge bulb, so I don't want to put my digging trowel too close to the plant because there's a good chance I could go through the bulb. I'll just try and gently scrape some of the soil, right? Oh, that seems solid, that. Any sign I give? No. <laughs> Giving slightly. Oh, here we go, here we go, people. Where's this enormous bulb? Oh, yeah. It's not a bad size, not as big as I was hoping for, but it's not a bad size. Right. There we go. If we see Can you see that? That is a bulb bill. And if I carefully take that off and pop that up, in a couple of years that will grow uh, into a, a big plant with huge cloves that we can harvest. And oh sorry, yeah, that we can um, not harvest, that we can plant out to form these these big bulbs. So it's not as big as I was expecting, but I'm not too disappointed with that. That's not bad. And there's a couple of little bulb bills on that we can harvest as well. Right, let's get the others up. So all four are up. There's a, a fair few bull bills on which I'm going to keep. Um, to give you an idea of the size, that's an elephant garlic. That's a normal garlic. So, I'd say about three times bigger. 
and the garlics we've grown. That's quite struggled to get my fist around that. Whereas on the, the normal garlic, yeah. Oh wow, we're definitely growing these again. Right, I'll treat these the same way. I'll let them dry out, clean them off. And then some of the, you only get um, three, four cloves to each bulb. Some of those cloves will hold back and then we can replant in the autumn. And we'll, uh, we'll just grow them the same way. We'll overwinter them again. Right, I'm really happy with that. First year of elephant garlic fantastic we just need to eat it now and see what it's like i've been told it's um like a very mild garlic you would think wouldn't you because of its size it's going to be really strong and powerful in taste but it isn't it's milder than garlic apparently so that should be good we get through quite a bit of garlic in our house so we'll, we'll i'll look forward to cooking with that we get quite a lot of blackbirds on our plot and these strawberries aren't going to last two seconds as soon as they start going red um, while the blackbirds are around so what I'm going to do is very quickly just pull out the odd bit of grass that's growing up through but we've, we've got a mulch of um, grass cuttings I'll very quickly weed it and then I'm going to net them we'll get them covered with a net so hopefully protect our crop this year because we, we didn't do fantastic last year with the strawberries um, you've got to be up here the second they're ready because if you're not blackbirds just come and eat them so let's see how we can do this now we're just very lucky that we have an allotment and it gives us more space to grow strawberries you do not need an allotment to grow strawberries you don't even need a garden Try one, maybe two, depending on the size of the basket, two strawberry plants in a hanging basket. The difference in taste between a strawberry you've grown yourself and one that you've bought from the shop is absolutely mind-blowing. You will feel like you've lived your whole life being lied to about the taste of strawberries when you realise how good they can taste. They're a very easy plant to grow, so well recommended if you're new to gardening. Pretty much all you need to do is give it some fairly rich soil. So, in other words, make sure there's some good compost or organic material in there. Nice drainage, they do like a bit of drainage. They, they won't like sitting around in puddles, so make sure that that soil can drain. And put them in a position where they'll get as much sunshine as you can give them. To get a slightly earlier crop, you can put a cloche over the strawberries in about March, just as spring's kicking in, and that's that extra warmth will speed up the fruiting process. They can be prone to attack from certain pests like slugs and wood lice and blackbirds, obviously, that's why we're netting them. However, if you work on the general rule of thumb that healthy soil gives you a healthy plant, the healthier and stronger your plants are, the less likely they are to be attacked by these pests. They'll be more robust and able to withstand them. So in other words, to get healthy soil, start making your own compost. Seriously, it's one of the best things you can do for your garden, make compost. When you're netting anything that you're growing, you need to make sure there's enough height that you're not going to squash the plants underneath, but then around the edges, it has to be really secure so that mammals um, and birds won't get trapped up in it. Right, jobs are good. That should keep the birds off, he says. This was the bed that we had the overwintered garlics in. Now, using my... Um, crop rotation system RLBS or roots, legumes, brassicas and then solanaceae or spuds and tomatoes because that's the family they're in. Um, I would normally after the roots of the garlic I would normally plant legumes in here however today I've not got anything with me that I can plant out and we haven't got the time to go back home get something bring it back and plant it out so we're going to skip the L 
and we're going to put in some turnips which I believe are in the brassica family so we've gone from roots to brassicas on this occasion I've got how many varieties I've got I've got purple top milan in fact I'll show you purple top milan oasis and snowball so we'll we'll mix them up i think we'll mix them up we're not going to plant the whole bed we'll do like a little section down at the end because after that we've got some kale and what would it be um, broccoli. kale and broccolis we'll plant those up because of the, the way the sun goes that way if you will we'll put the smaller stuff at the front and then it's not going to get crowded out in the sun by the bigger stuff so we'll put the bigger stuff like the kale and the broccoli up, up at the end where ruby is you sniffing them chai flowers mm -hmm. your little chive sniffer any bees on them yeah there's loads that's what i'm looking at all oh, right nice one right let's get planting we grow turnips for the ball shaped root although i do believe that eating the tops of the turnips is quite a popular thing it's just not something we do um, when you eat the tops they treat you like a spring green in the same way that um, the leaves of beetroots are they prefer the cooler ends of the season so the start of the season and towards the end of the season so for example if you make a sowing in August they seem to do quite well as they move through into September when the weather cools slightly we're planting them out at the start of june perhaps not the best time but they will still grow we'll still get some decent turnips from it we just need to make sure that they don't dry out we don't like being dried out do that with your hand see you've got a line there up near your little finger if you do that they'll go into the line and then go along and Oh my god, how many? <laughs> Ace! Right, watch what we do. These two fingers, I'm going to go either side of the line. And that's one. And it's like a plough. And it, see how it's covering it over? It's like it's doing a split scene. Turnips grow quite quickly, so within two months, seven, eight, nine, ten weeks, you should get golf ball sized turnips which you can harvest and eat. The smaller they are, the sweeter tasting they are. When you get big and older, they can become a bit woody and not quite as pleasant, slightly bitter. We're not sowing them very deeply, they're only getting covered by about less than an inch of soil and as they germinate and grow we will thin them out you don't want them too closely packed turnips are one of the vegetables that we dehydrate a lot um, they dehydrate really really well and it, once they've been dehydrated we store them in a jar with a little silica sachet and then we'll add the odd handful every time we make a vegetable soup with our dehydrated vegetables I have actually made a video about dehydrating turnips. I'll put the link in the description. Well, there's a flavour guide on the back. <laughs> What's it say? It, like? it says what? that the Are oasis. These oasis? Yeah. yeah. It says that the oasis turnips, the flavour guide for them, is extremely sweet, mm. highly unusual, new and unique turnip. <laughs> Well, then that's it really, it's just telling you how to grow it there. <laughs> Done? Mm -hmm. Ace. Right. Thank you very much. So, so right, now, can you remember <laughs> what went where? Um, we got, um, was it the snowball, snowball first? Milan. Purple top Milan. Yeah. Oasis! Mm-hmm. Right. Which ones do you think I think are going to be the best ones? Oasis. Oasis. Why might that be? 
Because it's Oasis. Because it's Oasis, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Great band, great turnips. <laughs> right, we'll use that little cane, just leave that there. That will help us remember that we've got something in there. Well, now we can start planting out the, the bigger stuff, the brassicas and that. But before the seeds blow away, let's get them put away. Yeah, water that in, please. Thanks, Ruth. Well, in my back pocket. I did, I, did you fold up all the um, little yeah, foil packets? Yeah. Alright, so Ruby's giving him a nice good drink. Actually, the soil was a little bit moist from earlier, wasn't it? When we watered, before we decided to harvest the garlics, we'd watered them all, hadn't yeah, we? Yeah, but it looks dry. Yeah, it is drying out quickly. It's a very sort of like sunny day with a, a light breeze that's whipping the moisture off the top of the soil. Right, let's get these brassicas in then. Oh, I don't know actually. Hang on, can we get that on camera? All right, hold it there. I'll zoom in. You might just have a lot of spots. Hang on, focus, focus. Doesn't want to focus. You see the ladybird, ladybug, ladybird. What do you call them, Boo? Oh, um, I call them ladybirds. Ladybirds. I think I call them ladybirds as well. Right. So, what are the broccolis, does it say? Um, that one's, I think they're all Rudolph. Rudolph. Rudolph broccoli. Yes. Right, let's get them planted towards the back near where the, the chives are falling over onto... Um, spring's hyacinths, the hyacinths are dying off now, I don't know if you can make out yellow strap like leaves, that's where the hyacinths were, so we'll, we've will we got a stick on the ground separating the hyacinths from the growing, the food growing part of the bed, let's get these broccolis planted out at the back, mm -hmm. so let's move the kale, get the kales out of the way, right we'll go for four, so like two there, to okay. If that I'll makes sense. Two. Cheers. Right, sure. if I just if I dig the holes for us quickly. And plant these quite deep. A lot of brassicas need to be quite firmly planted. Okay. So we'll plant them fairly deep. Is that deep enough? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll get in with the travel, okay. you're alright. Right, Ruby, mm -hmm. swap sides up, you come where I've been. You get them two planted in. Oh, you've started me an all off, thank you. You're welcome. While we're on the subject of brassicas, what we're not growing this year is Brussels sprouts. No real reason why we're not growing, we just haven't planted any from seed. Um, I'm not ruling them out though, if I see any at garden centres in a nice little tray, little plug plants, I don't see why we can't get some more Brussels sprouts on the go for this year. I might be wrong, but I think, do you know um, Cheshire Homestead or Biblical? Mm -hmm. I think he once told me he was going to grow some Oasis turnips. He said he'd seen me grow them and he was getting older some and I, I think he did. I think he did. Might have been this year actually, I can't it quite remember. It's a very, very biblical thing to get. It's a very biblical thing. Cheshire Homestead. Yes. Yeah, so Cheshire Homestead, if you're watching, um, if you did plant Oasis turnips, let us know in a comment underneath, mate. Right. This variety that we're planting, Rudolph, it's a very early purple sprouting broccoli. Should be ready from about January. So we grew these from seed ourselves. Let's have I got the, no I don't think I've got the date on. Um, oh yes I have. What date were they the sown? 22nd of March. 22nd of March. Right, they're probably well, well due planting out then. Mm -hmm. Any more ideas for the, like, the chickens choose or 
I'm keeping them a secret for the Let the Chicken Stew Challenge. You don't often see purple sprouting broccoli in the shops, so it's a good idea to grow your own. How smooth that look is. Oh, yeah. But you know what I'm thinking? Painting it. Yeah. Right. Broccoli's done. Um, we won't water them just yet. What we'll do is get the kales planted out. Kales were also on the 22nd of March. Oh, same day, 22nd of March. Right, okay, nice one. Right, Kales, how many of these have we got? Was it six? Yes. Okay, good stuff. Mm -hmm. and these right, are I, as I make holes, mm -hmm. it's going a bit away from the edge, I think. These are curly Kales. Curly Kales. Kale is another plant, just like the turnips, that we do a lot of dehydrating with. We also eat it just lightly boiled um, in the same kind of way that you would eat cabbage leaves as well. The roots on Oh, yeah. Kale is another plant that you don't necessarily need a huge amount of space like an allotment for to be able to grow it. Try planting one kale plant in a fairly large container or pot it's a brilliant plant it really is it's the plant that does not know when to stop giving you leaves for you to be able to pick and eat you can start the seeds off from spring and don't worry that that moment has passed now you they're still fairly cheap to buy little kale plug plants if you can afford that within your budget Plant them out roughly 18 inches apart and as they grow you harvest the lower leaves first so every time you go to the plant to pick some leaves off always take the lowest leaves. They will be the bigger leaves. All the new growth comes from the top of the plant. The seven tails. Seven? Oh, right. We'll squeeze, we'll squeeze an extra one in somewhere, don't worry about that. There's always space for more, growing more food, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Hell yes. So long as you don't pick too many leaves off one plant at, the, at, at any time, because that will affect the growth of the plant, you should be able to continue to pick leaves off your kale plants all the way through the winter. And then in spring, they'll start to throw out flower spikes. These flowers are edible as well, so you treat them to eat them, you'd treat them in the same way that you'd eat purple sprouting broccoli. Right, so all of these need watering in now. Okay. And Rue, because it's bright sunshine, I know this is easier said than done, but try to water the soil next to the plant instead of just spraying it all over the plant and then that way there isn't loads of water droplets on the leaves that the sun can burn through. I'll try. You, you will just try, that's all I ask. Don't, and, and don't worry if you get a splash on the leaves. Don't 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 beat yourself up about it. Just we're just trying to make an effort because it's such bright sunshine. Like that. That's fantastic. That's spot on. In between those two rows of brassicas, in the middle of the screen, draw an imaginary vertical line. There's nothing stopping me planting a quick growing catch crop. Something that's small, um, before the kale plants start to put some height on and they block the sunlight. Something that's quick growing as well. So something like lettuce, radishes, maybe even some more turnips. And I suppose I could even go crisscross as well. So going horizontally across the screen, in between each row of two kale plant and the purple sprouting broccolis, the Rudolphs, there's nothing really stopping me planting out that way too. Oh, fantastic, Rue. Thank you very much, darling. Thank you. Right. Nice bit of progress there. Four Rudolph broccolis uh, seven seven green curly kales planted out and three rolls of different turnips we've got snowball purple top milan and oasis in what was the overwintered garlic bed mm -hmm. 
garlic harvested, which is here. That's the garlic from that bed. Them are the elephant garlics, but that's the garlic from the overwintered bed. Garlic harvested, weeded, hold, planted out. Oh, progress. This teamwork, this. Me, you and Livy, we've smashed out a load of stuff here. Just as we were leaving, we've decided that we're going to water the chilies and sweet peppers in the greenhouse one more time. Uh, when we got here earlier this morning, some of them were, were looking pretty wilted, weren't they, Olivia? Yeah. So Livy gave them three uh, watering cans. We've got about 15 plants, I think. We're just going to give them, them all a bit more of a drink. Great job, Liv. Although some plants like the chilies and sweet peppers do need heat to grow, that's the reason we've got them in the greenhouse, too much heat can damage them. So ventilation helps and also keeping them well watered. Water in the soil, not the plant. Good on you. Let's have a look at how we deal with our garlic harvest. When we got the garlic home, we've stuck it just outside. It's a lovely sunny dry day today so it'll help that get it started to dry out um, but we're going to take that one step further and what we'll do is on this rack here now I have done this in a video but it was a couple of years ago so I don't know how many of you remember that uh, and I've, I've recently gained a, a load of new subscribers to the channel so you're very welcome here thank you um, and if you haven't seen it before this was an old mini greenhouse and on the, the cage things, we're going to hang the garlic through them to dry them. So, Rue, if you just snip off, like down to like the first leaf, if you will, leave a bit of a stalk on. Uh, taking off a lot of the greenery will just help the plant to dry out. Is it too small? Is that one too small for the thing? Mm. Okay, we can lie that on the top yes. if it's too small. All right. So let's let's do a couple more. In fact, try that one. So snip it about there. All right, don't worry about that. No, upside down. And then the cage holds it, so that'll dry out. Yeah. And in a couple of days' time, when this soil's got even more dry, you literally just brush it off, and it'll be nice and clean white skin underneath. Mm -hmm and it, it'll continue to dry out and store that way. Right, so we've got all of these to do. Let's carry on. So compost all the ends we've cut off. The garlics that were big enough to sit in the cage thing without falling through, we've got along the top there. Have you have your dots pause, you've counted them. It doesn't matter if you haven't, um, it, you, you don't have to. And then the ones that were too small, what we're going to do is... 17. Sev so we've got 17 that are big enough to just sit as they are. Then we've got all that. They won't, they're too small and they go through the holes. So Ruby, just lay one sheet of newspaper out. Where's Liam Gallagher gone? Was, was Liam on that one? Is he there? Yeah. There we go. There's the man. Right, I'll leave him there and I get to look at him every time I pick the garlic. So the ones that were too small and were falling through the holes, we're just going to spread out on the newspaper and these will dry as well. Just So the key here is airflow. You don't really want them touching. If you can. We have still got some more garlics to harvest from um, a couple of raised beds at the allotment. So I reckon we won't need to buy garlic for about seven months this year. Right, if you... <laughs> are you all right, babe? Oh, you still got... What have you got in your hand there? It's like a That is freaky. <laughs> so if you see here, we've got... On the top ones, we've gone every other one. We've left gaps around them. Um, and then the air can get round. All right. In terms of saving money by growing your own food, even though it's going to be several months before we have to pay for any garlic from a shop, it's not going to really be noticeable on our weekly shopping budget. However, you do that with a couple more vegetables and it all adds up. And so 
27. 27. So what's 27 add 7? Hang on, two sevens are 14. Add 20. That's 34. Add another 10, 44. I've given two next door and we gave two to Auntie Marie. So all together we had 48 garlics here. But we've now got 44 left. So not a bad haul really. Not a bad haul indeed. Right. Now I'm going to put this somewhere. Um, it's just out of the way. So it'll probably stand in the garage this. Yeah. Wait, Ruby, what are you doing with that? That is freaky. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I found it in one of my toy box things from ages ago. Right. So 44 garlics. All nicely drying out. Ready to be used. They'll last us quite a while these. Won't they? So if we use one to two a week, we cook in. Let's say we use two bulbs a week. That's 22 weeks worth of garlic there. Which is, how many months is that? Four weeks in a month, roughly. Um, um, I'm not very good at adding eight, up. 12, 16, About five and a half months, I think. Yeah. Five and a half months worth of garlic. Four and a half, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Right, Ace. Yeah, brilliant. And we've still got more to come. We've still got a raised bed with garlics in to be harvested at the allotment, so we've still got more to come as well. Right. What a great amount of garlic that is. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And keep an eye out for a video I'll be making about what to do with the bullbills on the elephant garlic that we also harvested today.